Ever loved a movie so much you couldn't wait to own it? You tell your friends, your family, your co-workers, just anyone who would listen. Once it's released, you rush over to possess it, excited to relive the experience. But in the end, it only sits and collects dust. This time, I'll be unwrapping them. Hey, what's up everybody? We're here for another unwrap review. This time it is of one of my favorite, like, romance movies, Save the Last Dance. This movie was voted by the people on my Facebook, because who can you trust more than the people on your Facebook friends list? Um, I had four different movies selected that, of course, have never been opened, uh, because that's the criteria of Unwrap Reviews, is it has to be movies that I didn't, like, bust the plastic off of, or, um, there might be a couple in there that I have, like, open, but I didn't watch it. I let somebody else watch it before me, so those will come later. Uh, but I had four different choices. I'll probably reuse the, those other three that didn't get selected and add one new addition. But we're here to talk about a very old movie, Save the Last Dance, which I kind of put in my mind to like think about whether this movie, you know, stands up to like now, 2020, because this movie came out in 2001. I didn't realize how old this is, but it still remains one of my favorite romance movies. <laughs> uh, I got this as, I think, a Christmas present years ago, and for like someone who's like, oh yeah, this is my absolute favorite movie, I need to have it, and I didn't like open it right away until now. I don't know what's wrong with me. So I took some notes so I can discuss it, but more importantly, let me tell you what this movie is about. Sarah Johnson, played by Julia Stiles, is a small town girl with big dreams of becoming a world-class ballerina. When she is suddenly forced to move to Chicago's gritty south side, she feels completely out of place until she meets uh, Chanel Reynolds, played by Carrie Washington, and is introduced to Chanel's handsome brother Derek, played by Sean Patrick Thomas. The initial turbulent conflict between Sarah and Derek fades quickly as their shared love for music and dance leads to common ground and romance. After seeing this movie, uh, which has been a very, very long time, I don't think I've seen this movie in like decades, and to see little baby Carrie Washington, which I like kind of shared in my Insta story, I was like, what? She's in this movie? Man. Also, whatever happened to Sean Patrick Thomas? Like, he used to be kind of, like, around a lot during that time, but then he just kind of, like, poofed. At least, to me. Um, I was kind of worried that this movie was going to be, like, kind of problematic, because, you know, the world has, like, changed. Like, PC culture is a thing. Like, I think this was around the era of a lot of movies that had, that, like, took place in urban schools where they had to, like, you walk in and there's lots of gangs and you have to go through, like, a metal detector and all of that, and I always thought that was just kind of, like, overboard, but maybe that actually really, like, happened in, like, schools, like, in, like, the city and stuff. I really don't know. It did really happen in my school. I mean, we had security and stuff, but we didn't have, like, the, just that, like, prison feel, but, so, it does have, I guess, like, it's basically a Romeo Juliet format story of two different cultures, like, meeting, and, like, the other side just kind of, like, being like, no, I don't think you should, I mean, in, a, in a way, but not completely, but it kind of has, like, a similar template. Uh, kind of like, I don't know, West Side Story, which is a movie that I want to talk about like later, but I don't know. It does focus a lot on the exchange 
and like differences between races and like having an interracial relationship and what that means in the black community, in the white community, and you know, just having different cultures like meld together. And I like that. So some of my thoughts when I was getting back into this movie was I was worried how well has this aged? Uh, am I remembering like all the stuff I liked about this movie? Like does that like spark still exist? Which I mean it does. And I also remember that the soundtrack was amazing, which it still is. So does the movie hold up? I mean, despite the whole the school trend and all of that. I think it does. I think it's still to the core because I like in this day and age of the year 2020, uh, interracial relationships are slowly becoming more normalized in a way. There's still some stigmas when it comes to seeing a black man with a white woman or a white, um, or a white man with a black woman or any other combination of different races, you know, being together. Sure, there's still stigmas about it. I mean, there's a lot of stigmas when it comes, to, there's inequalities when it comes to races and dating, online dating. Like, Asian men are not that desirable, black women are not that desirable, and then you have uh, colorism, and it's just like, oh, well, if they have like fairer skin, then clearly they're more desirable than the darker skin, and that's just not just like black people, that's just any person. There's just, there's so many different factors, but I feel like interracial dating, majority, at least for America, is a little bit more accepted and less stigmatized as it is in the movie, although there's still stigma towards it, uh, towards interracial relationships, towards, you know, biracial or multiracial children. Um, but I feel like we've progressed a little bit you know, day by day, that it's not as bad compared to 2001, uh, but there's still, you know, hang-ups that people might have of like, why are you bringing this non-black person into our family? Why are you attracted to that? Like, didn't I raise you? Don't, don't, do you not love our race? Or why are you taking away the few good black, like, men or whatever? Like, that still exists, sadly, but I feel like it's not as bad compared to 2001 when this movie came out. So I wrote some notes, like after the fact, on a little post-it note, uh, and the first thing I did put was, does this movie hold up? And I think, for the most part, it does. There might be a few little minor things that I don't think hold up as much, but I feel like the overall message of loving whoever and just, you know, connecting through your passions, which was like music and dance. I think that's still relevant and timeless. Um, I've already mentioned that the soundtrack remains fantastic. Uh, one of my favorite songs when this movie came out, and I believe I was in high school or going into high school when it came out, was Casey and JoJo's Crazy which they did do some like behind the scenes stuff on how they made the video and that and back then when people made songs for movies they actually incorporated stuff that was in the movie which um they're getting back into now but before it's just been a while since they even incorporated anything in the movie in music videos I, there was a period of time where it's just like, oh, I made a song, and then they just throw it on the soundtrack, and then they'll put it, like, in the background of the movie, but they don't incorporate anything from the movie. So they did kind of break down in the extras of how they did the music video and the intricate details they put into it, like, incorporating the rain and stopping, um, 
Derek from going out with his friends and making a terrible decision and stuff like that. Um, so yes, because uh, you see that it's a special collector's edition, um, I did watch a good chunk of those special features on the back. I didn't, I didn't watch it with the commentary, maybe I'll do that another time. Um, I did watch Making the Save the Last Dance, which was interesting, and I kind of watched about the writer story. Um, they had two old white men, like, kind of oldish white men, they wrote the script, but there was a black woman who kind of like looked over and kind of edited some stuff and there were some things that she was like, no, no, I don't want this, I don't want like black people to be trained. So there was some good, like I think the script writing was very well balanced. It wasn't overly, you know, sympathetic to one side or the other. The white one wasn't like really weak or helpless or clueless or ditzy or anything like that. And they kind of mentioned that a few times in some of the special features, which is nice because a lot of the time they do these fish out of water type things. And the, and if it's a girl, she's just kind of like, oh, I'm so ignorant to everything. Like I live under some rock and I don't know how things work. But she was not that. She was very tough. She stood up for herself a lot of the time, and I appreciated that as much as they appreciated that. Um, they also kind of went into how they did the choreography, and that Julia Stiles was, uh, she had a little bit of, like, like dance, and a rack, like, she picked up dancing very easily. Um, from the ballet to the hip-hop, and she said that the hip-hop was a little bit more her speed more than the ballet because she goes out to clubs and stuff. Well, on the other hand, uh, Sean, Sean Patrick Thomas doesn't really go out dancing, and he had, like, a little more trouble. They had to, like, work with him a little bit more when it came to the choreography, which you would think, stereotypically, like, he would be all about it, and then she would be kind of lost, but no, that's not the case. Don't believe your stereotypes. <laughs> uh, I also watched a couple of the deleted scenes, which I'm glad that they were deleted. I don't think they, like, the choices that they made were good ones. Uh, especially when you kind of see that little interest between Derek and Sarah. Uh, when he's like, oh, well, if you're going out to the club, I can help you with your moves and that kind of, like, spark. Um, I also thought their relationship was very organic, so I really liked that. It didn't seem forced. It seemed very natural. They were kind of competing intelligence-wise, and then they were, like, they always challenged each other, and I really liked that. Um, occasionally I thought they lingered a little bit too long on her keeping her mother's death secret, but for the most part, I didn't have a huge problem with it. Occasionally I can't speak specifically what points. I thought there were some odd cuts. At least that's what it says in my notes. Odd cuts. So there were certain moments in the movie where I thought the editing was kind of weird, but it didn't distract me too much, because if it did, I probably could name a specific point where I'm just like, that really bothered me. Why did they cut it there? But for the most part, I thought that it was fine. Um, also, uh, actress I haven't seen in a long time, and I knew, like, I've seen her plenty of times in, like, 90s TV shows, Bianca Lawson, where have you been? I feel like she's been typecast a lot of the time, she's usually kind of like a bitchy character, and she plays that character in this movie, she's, um... Derek's ex-girlfriend, and so when she sees Derek with dancing with Sarah, she tries to, like, jump in, and even though she's like, oh no, I don't want him, and now when she sees, you know, him moving on with somebody else, especially someone white, she's just like, oh no, we need to, like, break that up. Um, another person who I felt is typecast, at least every time I've seen him, is... Fredro Starr, who plays Malachi, uh, Derek's best friend. You would know, most people know him as Q in Moesha, Moesha's boyfriend. Uh, and he, every time I see him, he's always playing like this rapper thug 
type character, even though I think in real life he, I mean, I know he really is a rapper in real life, like, he's a legit actual rapper, um, but I don't think, but I think he's like more a, of a softy than a hard boy that then he portrays in both Moesha and this movie, but I feel like he was also kind of typecasted, but I mean. You, you can't help what you played back then, because practically 2001 might as well be another 1999. They all kind of blend in together. <laughs> but it was kind of cool. Uh, same. I did have a note on here of uh, a scene that I didn't think was... I don't know. I thought there was like no resolution after it happened, but then when I watched the making of it, I was like, and when, uh, when the uh, black female writer was talking about them being at a clinic instead of a welfare office, I thought there was like no resolution, but there was. I missed it somehow. I don't know how. Maybe I was like playing a game or something, and I missed that like explanation. But I liked that. They leaned a little bit into stereotypes, but they're like real life things because like Chanel was a single mother and the father was kind of dead beatish. Like he would try, but like he kind of ran away. He wasn't super involved and he would be frustrated and he was just clueless. But I mean, they're teenagers. Like what do you expect? But it didn't like make you feel sympathetic. Like oh, the poor black mother, like, you're all, you're struggling, like, she was very strong, she is very smart, so, I get it, I, I liked her, uh, but there is one scene that I thought was really odd, that, uh, I don't care if I spoil this, because this movie's old, 2001, come on, this is like 19 years ago, like, next year, it'll be like 20 years anniversary, but, um, Malachi wants Derek to come with him to get revenge on this gang, this other set of guys that have been threatening him and his friends. Like, they did like a drive-by while they were playing basketball. So they were like, so he was determined to go into their territory and get revenge. And I kind of, sort of, didn't see this part when I was watching it. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I don't know if I fell asleep or I was playing a game. Who knows? But in my memory, so uh, I think I know what happened. And maybe yeah, I probably will correct myself if I'm wrong, but I think I, I think I'm right on this one. So at first, Derek tells him, "No, I'm not gonna do that," and Sarah even backs him up and says, "No," and then. Derek and Malachi kind of bump heads about that, and he's like, oh, you're gonna let this white girl tell you what to do, and he's like, no, just some, like, like, he insults Sarah, Sarah says on the back, and then Derek, like, hits her when they were going home. But something, they have, like, that, that dumb misunderstanding situation that happens in these dumb romance movies, like, these silly romance movies. I mean, I still really like this, but it happens in almost every romance movie where there's some sort of misunderstanding, and they have a fight, and then they go their separate ways. Um, Derek decides he's gonna go with Malachi to get revenge on these guys, and then he realizes this was a bad idea and that he needs to handle it himself and he runs away. And he goes to Sarah to see her audition for Juilliard instead. And then we get that epic, you know, audition scene, which is fantastic. But um I don't think there is a conclusion. Like we never hear anything about what happened to Malachi, like after Derek runs away. It's like it never happened. I think that's just really odd and I feel like they could have like brought that up a, a little. I don't know. Like at least mention like, hey I decided to be here with you and I realized that I like made a terrible mistake by going with him to go do some stupid revenge thing that's gonna get us killed. Like they don't 
they didn't have to like deep dive into it because I feel like that would have made the movie a little bit longer if they delved into like how like if Derek found out what happened during this revenge situation or not but I mean I feel like Derek's mind just completely like drops Malachi completely and it's just all Sarah. I just thought that was weird. Nonetheless, still one of my favorite romance movies, and I keep doing the quotes because I'm like, is it a romance movie? I, I guess. Uh, these hybrid hip-hop themed romance things. I mean, I don't know. I still say Say the Last Dance is one of my favorite romance -y type movies. And if you haven't seen it, totally should and enjoy 2001 I don't know definitely speaks of its time that's all I gotta say uh, so that's the review I hope you enjoyed it uh, if you like my unwrapped review of Save the Last Dance please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more content I do on this channel hit the subscribe button below I post on Wednesdays and Thursdays Wednesday and, or Thursday, sorry. And if you want early access to my videos and other stuff that I do, because I do extra things and you want to support me even more, you can join Patreon like these lovely people below. And I'll see you guys next time in another video. Peace.